doors. How do they work? Welcome friends to devlog number two. Over the past couple weeks, I've been watching a lot of other devlogs, doing really great things. It's always helpful to see how other people are going through the same process that I am. And I know how important it is to show support to these channels so that they can grow in the same way that I hope to. But I can't grow if I don't create. So let us open the door to chapter two. I knew my game needed doors. Doors are vital to a horror game. They can mean so many different things. A door can be a gateway to another world. A door can be all that stands between you and death. A door can mean freedom. Most importantly, you don't know what's on the other side of that door until you open it. And it is that unknown that can cause tension and fear. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. So it is with that thought that I took the steps to open a door in Unreal. There were two ways that I could think of of opening a door in a video game. The first way, while standing at the door, you click a button and an animation opens the door automatically. The second way was dragging the mouse while holding in the mouse button. This would open the door as much or as little as you wanted. With Phasmophobia being an inspiration, it should come as no surprise that I went with the second option. I feel it provides a lot more immersion and I like the control that it gives the player. I started over on Matt Asplund's channel. He has tons of great tutorials. With his tutorial, I learned how to set clamp angles on my door so that it was only able to open within a given angle. Then using line tracing, if the character was standing in front of the door, they could click and drag to open it. A line trace is like a laser beam. You can set it to come out of the character's eyes and if that laser beam hits a specified object, it will say, hey, I found that thing you want, and allow you to perform a task only if you're hitting that object. I'll use this for any number of actions that require the game to know what the player is looking at at a given time. I then went on to a tutorial by X Anima Games. I understood their blueprints a little better. Unfortunately, not all the coding was in their devlog, so my doors turned out one of two ways. I asked for some help on their channel. And they got back to me within a day. I had to look up some more tutorials on line tracing, but I got it to work and it's really smooth. I also remembered from about a year ago, just playing around how to add a sound to a door opening and closing. It probably isn't the best way. I basically added an invisible door stop in the frame where the door opens and closes. When the door leaves this box, it plays an opening sound. And when it enters the box, it makes a closing sound. But it functions and I'm happy with the result. Super simple. I think I could have also gone into the animation itself and added the sounds to the specific frames of the door opening and closing, similar to how I'll do footsteps. After figuring out the door, I decided I needed a light source. Because this story is going to take place in the 1880s, I couldn't very well have a flashlight, so I had to make a lantern. I'm not super confident in my blender skills, so I began with a couple starter shapes and added on from there. I actually really impressed myself. I learned how to take a curve and make it into a mesh, which I think is the most important thing I have learned in Blender to date. That knowledge alone allowed me to make the handle, 
those metal crossbars that hold the glass and the outer bars. A few more cylinders and some extruding and I had a lantern. I decided to do the materials within Unreal rather than Blender. Again, just because I'm not that familiar with Blender. So that may have been the wrong way to go about it, but still plenty of time to fix it later. A bit of dull brass, some dirty glass, and a point light is all it took to transform this 3D model into an actual lantern. So I got the player to hold it, and utilizing some physics, the lantern actually swings back and forth on its handle. It's very basic at the moment, but I'm super happy with it. Based on what I've seen in other devlogs, I'm going to make an effort to be better at recording things as I do them. Working on the logs after the fact, I find it more difficult to try to go back and record some of the things that I'm explaining after I've done them. On my last video, I was asked if I had tried the Advanced Locomotion System plugin, which I hadn't. I have since downloaded it, but I haven't opened it up yet. My plan is to maybe do a live stream of me looking at it for the first time and seeing what I can do with it. But I knew I had to get this out first, and so that's why I haven't done it yet. I hope to do that this week. So until next time, remember to always carry a light into the darkness.